piece uh, to further add on about God and then to take it into build or destroy, born, and then to cipher. God is a group reality seen through individual eyes. So when you study classical or ancient civilizations and you see what some people believe to be many gods and goddesses and polytheism, no, that's not what it is. They're actually forces of nature that define various different attributes of this intangible intelligence or this supreme consciousness through many different forms. They're all just aspects of the one self. You know what I'm saying? And that one self represents the supreme consciousness or the supreme intelligence that is all-knowing, all-powerful, and omnipresent because it permeates all physical vehicles. Um, so... When we say, yo, peace, God, or there's many, you know, gods and stuff like that, we are all gods that represent Allah or the one God or the one supreme intelligence that expresses itself through all of our different various attributes. Um, so, as gods and nerfs, we live according to a God-centered culture, meaning, you know, like I said, I think I mentioned in the other video, um, you know, Jesus used to say, I and the Father are one. If I say that the black man is God, it's also saying that I'm one with the supreme intelligence that fashioned this whole physical universe. Um, or a Christian would say, what would Jesus do? You know, they live their lives and govern their lives according to that mantra. It's the same thing. You know, when I live my life, I think of, okay, since I am the host or the conduit of the supreme intelligence, what is the most divine or supreme way in which I can handle this situation? What is the most divine or supreme way in which I can deal with this person? What is the most divine and supreme way in which I can approach my diet? You know, and since we have that mantra or mantra that we live our lives according to, there's not all the time that we do the most perfect thing, you know what I'm saying, or the best way in which we can express this supreme consciousness because it's dwelling within an imperfect or physical vehicle which has a limitation to it. You see? But we strive for that perfection. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, there are days when we express ourselves in the most supreme way and there's days when we don't. You know what I'm saying? But we always strive to express the higher self, you know, through all of our different people activities. And that is what governs our culture. You know what I'm saying? We're God-centered. And we use our ancient ancestors as the, as the motto or the template from which we express this God-centeredness in a contemporary way. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as build and destroy, or build or destroy is concerned, build or destroy represents the construct of reality, or eternity, or infinity. If you look at the number 8 and turn it on its side, in mathematics, that is a symbol for infinity. So, in order to maintain infinity, the operating system is building and destroying, constructing and destructuring. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, as far as God is concerned, that is God or this supreme, this supreme intelligence's operating system, building and destroying, giving and taking away. Also, even though original people were the first to ponder and develop the concept or reality of God, this has gone through a lot of different nations and civilizations and societies of people through millions and trillions of years on this planet Earth that have built and added on to that and tweaked it to a certain degree and gave more clarity on how this supreme intelligence should be expressed. And there have been different nations of people who have also taken away regardless of what their gender has been, regardless of what their skin color has been, regardless of what language or regardless of what era. You know what I'm saying? And those of you who study religion, really study religion, you can see how there's some people that have things that you could agree with and other things that you may not be too, you know, fond of. And that is simply because you have different people working with this concept of God or supreme intelligence in their own right. And they have added some things to it, and they have taken some things away from it. They have built with it, and they have also destroyed with it. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you go through that process of, of sifting through those different societies of people and studying the different things that people have brought to the planet or take it away from the planet, you begin to born or bring into existence your own way in which you want to express that reality of God. So that's God, build, or destroy, and then born. Therefore, you deal with your own cipher. 
So that's God, build or destroy, born, and cipher. So we all go through this natural process regardless if we recognize supreme mathematics or not. You know, when a person ponders the reality of God, they're forced to realize the construct of how God functions in regards to that consciousness's operating system. That's build or destroy. Then you're going to born something. You're going to bring forth some ideas into existence, and you're going to have to deal with your own cipher. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a simple way of breaking down supreme mathematics. And also, I want to add that not all gods and nerves build about supreme mathematics the same way that I do. You have many different gods and nerves that express it differently. You know what I'm saying? Um, with the same determined idea to give people an understanding, a better understanding of how to live their lives more effectively, how to live their lives in a more righteous fashion, and how to be more divine in a sense where they can be one with that supreme intelligence or consciousness and be God-centered in a way where when they leave this planet, it's going to be better, not worse. So with that said, I just want to say peace, and i add on later.